Today we're here to answer one question. Is the 2023 Acura TLX Type S worth the nearly $64,000 it costs here in Canada, or is it just a glorified Honda Accord? I'm Niall, this is Test Drive, and let's hit the road. Yes, the 2023 Acura TLX Type S. This is actually at the end of this model year's production run. We're getting close to when the 2024 should be coming out. We actually don't know if there's gonna be any changes for them, but let's go over what's important about this car here, because either you're gonna be buying it new, you're gonna be buying it at the start of next year, and maybe there's gonna be some deals on them, or you're watching this down the road, like it's 2025, and you're curious to see what the 23s had to offer now that they're certified pre-owned. But anyway, let's talk about this car. $63,000 in Canada, just a little bit over that. An extra 500 bucks if you want different paint colors. In the States, it's about $57,000 US. Now this uses a three liter single scroll turbocharged V6 engine, produces 355 horsepower, 354 pound feet of torque, and uses a 10 speed automatic transmission. Now, there's a couple cool things about the transmission. Honda says that this isn't just the regular TLX transmission that they put in all of the other TLXs of this generation. They say that you get 40% quicker downshifts when in manual shift mode. So if I go into manual mode, shift it up, it's 30% faster faster going up and 40% going down. They have rev matching and sort of like an auto blip. You can hear it more if you're outside of the vehicle. I do, do find that, you know, during the time I've been driving this, you know, the interior sound is not quite as good as it is on some other cars, but if you're outside of the vehicle, apparently it sounds fantastic. How do we know that? Well, we just did a showdown, our first showdown since April of 2022 on this car versus the Kia Stinger GT. And I had the chance to drive the car back to back with Victor, and he was able to hear this car from the outside as he was driving the Stinger. So something that you can't really hear while you're driving it because there is pumped in audio. Acura has a couple of technology features on this car that kind of make it compelling and not like they're standout features and they're only available on the Acura, but there's active noise control on this vehicle, so active sound dampening as you're driving along. The speakers, the 17 speaker ELS audio system will help to counteract any road noise, but then Acura also says that they've got the active sound control, which pumps in audio that they say is natural engine sounds as well as the intake and exhaust of this car and i do hear it i find that i hear it a little bit more it's almost like there is a microphone on the exterior of the car somewhere and based on their wording it kind of sounds like that's the case but you know what everybody's pumping in fake audio these days you can't avoid it if you really hate it you're out of luck but there is an active exhaust system on this car. There's a butterfly valve that will open and close depending on the situation. So for example, we are in sport plus mode right now. It means that exhaust is fully open. All of the four exhausts, the four pipes at the end there, all have notes coming out of them. But depending on how you start the vehicle up and how you're driving it, those can either be open or closed. So for example, because we're driving along in sport plus mode, all of it is open. If you're in sport mode, they say that it's like up to a certain speed and certain RPMs, it'll be completely open and then it'll close itself just to be a little quieter. In comfort mode, they're, they're essentially closed up, so you're getting the quietest experience. But I do find that even on a cold start, the sound on this is pretty good. It's nice and throaty. So if you're looking for something a little different, this could be it. Now I want to talk a little bit about the engine because it is interesting. Again, three liter, single turbocharged, non VTEC. You know, Honda and Acura are obviously known for their VTEC engines. They've become legendary, not only from enthusiasts, but also for memes as well. But this actually is not a VTEC engine. And one of the things that Honda says that they've done, or Acura has says that they've done, is have an active cylinder deactivation system, active engine management system, that as you're driving along, depending on the situations, will cut down the cylinders in half. 
but then you know usually it kind of counteracts the v6 this is a transverse v6 so it's not sitting in the engine like this it's sitting like that it can create some vibration so there is an active vibration dampening system in this vehicle these shocks on the front of these these ballasts almost at the front of the engine can help counteract the actual cylinder deactivation but it also helps to alleviate some of the road feel that you might be getting some of the negative road feel driving along with the chassis so honestly this really is a very comfortable car and that's sort of what Acura is known for I mean they consider themselves to be precision crafted performance that's their slogan and yeah I can definitely see that a lot of the car is electronic you know you've got a drive-by-wire system the steering is very electronic as well you're losing a lot of that feedback that die-hard car enthusiasts are looking for when it comes to a vehicle but you do get something out of it too because it does perform very well and i find you know the road is comfortable enough seats are nice and comfortable interior here you know it's very accurate nothing that we haven't seen before you do lose out on the hud so when we drove this car back in 2021 it did have a head-up display but any of the type s versions don't get a head-up display which i think is a miss not quite sure why Acura doesn't explain it but there could be something to do with weight perhaps because this is now a very front heavy car you know when you compare it to the regular TLX it was a relatively 50 50 distribution overall for weight distribution not quite 50 50 but it was like 48 to the rear and 52 in the front but this 59 percent of the weight is in the front of the vehicle 41 percent is at the back that's a lot of weight on the front of this vehicle so it might not handle and perform quite as well as you might expect some other vehicles in this segment to perform because this is going to be competing directly with vehicles like uh, bmw m340i a mercedes c43 amg cadillac ct5 for example the ct5v would be a great competitor to this kia stinger gt and the genesis g70 like there's a lot of competition when it comes to these vehicles so you've got a lot of choice out there this one is affordable compared to the germans at least but is it really worth that 63k because you know we even talked about it a couple years ago we featured a acura tlx and compared it to the honda accord to see if it really was just a glorified accord and there's a lot more going on with this car than just slapping a couple badges on it it is completely ground up a different vehicle from the accord despite as far as i know this is using an older accord generation platform that it's built on but it performs extremely well the engine is responsive you know if i put it in manual mode here like listen it sounds fantastic and then even downshifts it sounds really good like it does purr it goes up to about 6200 rpm is where the red line is okay 10 speed transmission might get a little lost here and there but i do find that it is quick enough you know it is responsive enough when i'm shifting it you can't shift into second though honda will not allow you to do that it will shift it automatically into second for you even if you're in flappy paddle mode i think it's just because they don't trust you to be able to actually drive their car but you know if i shift it down chuck it into the corner here oh <laughs> like it just sounds great it's a really nice car and it is precisionly sculpted like i do feel that this truly is a scalpel if we're thinking about operating tools this really would be a scalpel you're going to go in get the precision cuts make sure everything's nice and pretty and then if you're buying something like an m340i or mercedes c43 they are quite good it's not quite like a sledgehammer or a chainsaw in comparison but it's it's not quite as sharp the blade it, just a little bit so acura does do a very good job in that department but is that really enough to set it apart from the competition yes it is cheaper this car is about thirty thousand dollars cheaper than even a base model c43 amg and you know about twenty five thousand dollars cheaper than a base model m340i so you do get quite a bit of car without having to spend an insane amount of money but is it really worth it you know are you in the market for something like this 
really depends. It's going to obviously have to come down to what you want out of it. But Acura has done quite a bit to make this car perform. It's not just slapping a Type S badge on this. Acura has really worked hard in order to make this vehicle perform as well as it should. And they say this really is the fastest production vehicle that they've made outside of the NSX. This is the ty fastest Type S at the time of launch. And, and it definitely shows. I mean, this is an enjoyable car to drive. It does complement the history of the Type S. Obviously in 1997 Acura or Honda came out with the NSX Type S and the engineers at the American branch of Honda, Acura, decided, hey, what can we do with a vehicle like this? They created a prototype car that they called it the ACR. It was a coupe and they said, let's, let's build something that is truly performance oriented from the ground up and just have some fun with it. The whole team got on board. It was like the entire company was behind this vehicle and that really spawned all the other Type S models that came the 2001 3.2 cl type s the 2002 3.2 tl type s the 2002 rsx type s and the 2007 tl type s now acura does have a number of type s models now we did drive the mdx when it launched back in 2022 we enjoyed it i think that this is a better performance vehicle overall because it's a car i don't like suvs when they come to performance they just don't perform as well because you're getting the same engine might as well have it in a car that handles and drives way better but like for the most part if you're comparing this directly with the germans there's there's really no competition just because of how expensive those cars are now it's insane now as i mentioned i'm not able to shift in to second the car will not let me it doesn't trust me which is fine you know i wouldn't trust me either but I want to see from a dig. Obviously, this is a performance car. Acura says it'll do it about uh, 0 to 60 or 0 to about 102 kilometers in roughly 5 seconds. So let's see. If we give it a bit of a brake dig here. Oh, that's quick. 100. That, that was pretty good. I got to say, I was, uh, I was pleasantly surprised by that. And yeah, I would say it's probably about five seconds or so not ideal weather conditions temperature you know tires are warmed up enough but for the most part i mean like that is a pretty quick car and it sounds really good too if you were standing outside it would sound a whole lot better but you're getting a ton of car with this it, and it is really a good daily driver. I mean, this isn't going to be a track car. I don't necessarily see a lot of people that are going to be buying this car and taking it on the track. But I think that you could have fun, maybe a weekend autocross event in a parking lot, you know, just driving around. I mean, it's been enjoyable coming back from Toronto in traffic with this because it does perform nicely. I don't see a ton of them on the road as well, which is always nice. I always like to buy a car that's just a little bit different that stands out. So I think that Acura has done a phenomenal job making this different from a regular Honda Accord, right? You really can't compare the two. And and I do think that it has some pretty strong and compelling reasons why you would want to buy this over the Germans. Price obviously being one of those major factors. I mean, everything is so expensive these days. The fact that you can get this for a pretty affordable price ain't so bad at all. So the last thing I'll leave you with when it comes to this car is Sport Plus mode. It's not just keeping their revs a little bit higher. Acura says that the super handling all-wheel drive system has been tuned for better performance and more rear-wheel drive-like driving style when you're in Sport Plus mode. So A, the exhausts are open all the time. And then Acura says that the power distribution to the super handling all-wheel drive system will go up to 70% to the rear wheels and they can go 100% to either wheel on the side. So it means it'd be 70% to one wheel like on the left or the right, which could be great for driving. We've got a number of technologies in this car, including an adaptive damping system in here. So there's quite a bit to make this car perform really well. Again, not necessarily a track car, but definitely a car that you want to keep on the road and enjoy it. I have enjoyed it. I'm keeping this car for a couple days longer than I have with some of the other press cars so far because because I can and because I enjoy it. I like driving it. It's comfortable. It's easy even for me, a big guy, to get in here. I am comfortable as well. The seats, very firm, very supportive. You've got the ultra suede inserts on the inside there with the leather exterior. I do like it. Rear seat space, not for me at all. It actually is not possible for me to really get back there, but I expect that. I don't expect to be able to get into the rear seats. I'm a driver. I should be here and only here. So for that, it's, it's really good. Some of the tech, not so much. Cameras could be improved. The rest of the safety tech is all great. 
everything that you would expect adaptive cruise control dual zone climate heated ventilated front seats you've got a heated steering wheel all the safety tech right I mean, you've got lane keep adaptive cruise rear cross traffic alert 360 cameras like everything is there there's nothing that is really missing except for the hud so for the most part you're getting exactly what you would want out of a performance sedan for a relatively affordable price when you compare it to the germans I like it. I like it quite a bit. And if you're curious to see a little bit more about this car, I do recommend checking out the showdown that we just did not too long ago, comparing this exact car to our 2023 Kia Stinger GT Elite. So check that video out if you're interested in knowing a little bit more. And if you're really interested, you can see the videos that we've done before. We've done a number of TLX videos. Like I said, we compared it to the Accord a couple years ago, and then we also did a 21 not too long ago either. But as always, your support on this channel is paramount to the success of it. It is important that you like, subscribe, comment, and we also have a membership now available that you can help support this channel on a monthly basis. So check out all that stuff. The description has all the information that you need on it. So thanks for watching. Until next time, take care.